The Vince McMahon thing's interesting. He's going through a lot right now. Uh, what do you make? Because it, it's kind of storyline comes reality. Like we watch this guy joke around about getting into compromising positions with employees and Trish Stratus bending over in front of him and all these funny moments and people kissing his ass in the middle of the ring. And now all of a sudden, um, it's it's alleged that you know he paid someone off a good few million to keep quiet after an affair. Is there surprise within the wrestling industry that that happened? Not really. I mean, is there surprise in any industry when it happens? And, and, and really, you know, when you look at it, it's really not illegal. He had an affair, paid the lady off to not say anything and mm. moved on. So it's almost like, okay, and yeah. um, people want to jump on it, but there's still always a undertone of it's wrestling oh it's just wrestling and if you look that story came out with a bang and then you really haven't heard anything about it since yeah. if this was you know Hollywood with Harvey Weinstein and that sort of thing but the difference between that was he was holding women back from getting gigs Harvey Weinstein you either bang me or you don't get the starring role this has never been said in Vince's thing there was a mutual acknowledgement of this affair and then he paid the lady to say nothing and she took the money so mm -hmm. You know, I, I really know Vince well, and it sucks that it happened. It sucks that he did it, but is anything really going to happen from it? I really don't think so. He, he's putting a, a public fr a front on. He's, yeah. he's certainly not acting like someone who's got anything to be ashamed of. He never the, does. He, well, the, he never does. The does. fact that he walked out on SmackDown straight away and announced SmackDown as if to say, I'm what? That's Vince McMahon. Yeah. Fuck and you. then he, he then he was at the UFC on the weekend. Like, what are you going to do about it? up. Yeah. Yeah. And, and like I said, I think that it'll come and go. Um, and once again, is it morally right? Absolutely not. Mm -hmm. Is it illegal? No. Is it something that is going to get him in real trouble? I don't think so because once again, unfortunately, oh, it's just Vince McMahon. It's just wrestling. Of course, he's going to do that. So, you know, those, those things come and go, and they happen, and it's too bad. But I really think it doesn't really matter in the long run. And you know, six months from now, I'll either be right or I'll be wrong. What's your relationship been like with Vince? Like, because I I always wonder what it's like to try to make. Uh, at least a meaningful relationship or a le relationship where you have some leverage with a billionaire who runs the whole company who is this audience of one yeah, but and Vince, to get close to him do Vince, you know what Vince I mean? Vince is just a lad at heart really? you know what I mean? he's just a fucking dude and yes he is very intimidating and he's a billionaire and he's you know the creator of, of this massive iconic company but deep down he's just a dude that likes to hang out, likes to joke, and likes to drink. But everybody that surrounds him, not everybody, but so many people, he's surrounded by yes men, as most guys in that position are. He doesn't want yes men, you know? And I had a really good relationship with him. I don't have much of a relationship with him now because obviously I don't work for him, so there's a little bit of a career issue. But if I text him right now, he texts me back in five minutes, always. Um, I loved working for Vince McMahon. I loved how Vince would challenge me and push me. And I also laugh when people say, oh, Vince has lost it. And, oh, look at Vince. He's terrible booker and all this other stuff. Maybe it's not great sometimes, but you're also dealing with a guy who's been doing this for 40 years. Imagine doing this for 40 years. I remember when I left in 2005, I said, I, I need to get away. And he said to me, I wish I could get away sometimes, but I can't. Like kind of wistfully for like three seconds, then he was back to Vince McMahon. Like, of course, it's hard to do this job. But what Vince do, does the best, and people don't know this unless you really work closely with him, is that he used to say, uh, like, well, how am I supposed to do this, Vince? I don't know. I just book the shit, you make it work. <laughs> uh, I like okay, that. so then I'll come back with an idea, and I've got this perfectly you know, formulated idea. And let's pretend the idea is this, is this water bottle here, right? And here it is, Vince. Here's my idea, this water bottle, and it's half full, and it says Evian on it, and it's gonna, this, it's gonna make fucking a million dollars for us, I know. And he'll look at it and think about the idea. Now, most people, if we were talking right now, and I started thinking, after about 30 seconds, if you weren't on the air, you feel compelled to jump in and talk, create sound. Don't do that with Vince. If he's thinking, let him think. He doesn't want to hear your stupid, you know, small talk. He'll just sit there. And sometimes it's 30 seconds and sometimes it's a minute. It's very uncomfortable, but he's thinking. And then what he'll do is take the water bottle and like turn it 
let's say 180 degrees and then you see this idea that I came up with that I thought was brilliant and this one little small twist that he adds to it makes it a, from a good idea to a great idea. Mm -hmm. That's what that's the genius of Vincent Mann. With me, he never came up with the genesis and the and the foundation of the idea. I would. But when I would present it to him, he would add the one little part that made it great. Mm -hmm. And most of the big hits and some of the stuff we discussed already was made great by just the little twists that Vince added to it. Like for example, the the the, the greatest entrance of all time as you as you said. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I was at a, a post office and there was a countdown clock, countdown to the new millennium, which was like at the time, three months, uh, you know, five days, six hours, 12 minutes and 10 seconds, nine seconds, eight, and it was just running this clock. And I was like, that's the perfect way for me to come into the WWE, the countdown clock. So um, his addition to it was that the countdown would hit zero right in the middle of the Rocks promo. That was the genius that he added. I never thought of that. I would never suggest that. I just thought it would end, and you know, maybe at the beginning of the show, or it would end, and I would appear. He's like, it ends right in the middle of the Rock's countdown. Like just little things like that. Like fuck, that's the that's that's the classic part of it. Mm -hmm. You know, Y two J. I I was pitching to him as the name of my finish, and he's like, no, 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 that's not the name of your finish. That's that's your name. And I was like, me. Like, yeah, you're Y2J. And I was like, really? And fuck, man. I mean, people still chant it to this day. Little, I thought of the idea and the and the term Y2J. He's the one who saw the overall picture that's much more valuable for for the name of you to be that. So that's kind of Vince's genius is, is the twists and turns that he adds to these ideas that make them really, really great.